All right. Hello and welcome to the Unleash Your Strength show. My name is Eddie Villa. I am the owner and creator of the Unleash Your Strengths program. And of course, uh, the, the, the guy who just kind of started this whole thing of Unleash Your Strengths. So what you're about to see is a live recording of our very first show. Uh, we have several groups inside of Unleash Your Strengths. And this group is a, a group that has been working on my certification course with me and, and helping many other people to learn how to unleash their strengths and help other people unleash theirs. So what you're going to watch is a pre-recorded uh, call and I hope you enjoy this. What I hope you do is you watch this and you say, oh my gosh, I love this, I want more, but here's, here's what I'm looking for when it comes to strengths, knowledge and understanding. You're all gonna see a great conversation between me and a group of mentors from the Unleash Your Strengths certification course. Uh, so enjoy. I wouldn't be here if you didn't commit to you. I want you to understand that I get that. The secret to life is giving. Giving everything. When people tell me bad things happen, we turn them into good, right? Everything is happening for us. All right, welcome everybody uh, to Unleash Your Strengths. This is the show where all the people that have been a part of Unleash Your Strengths for, for so long, uh, we get to hang out and we get to talk about all things strengths, all things business, all things relationships, all things health, uh, mental mostly, maybe even spiritual. And then of course, um, we like to tie it together in discussions about what's going on inside of Unleash Your Strengths. Today, this uh, call is going after we just finished week two of the Eddie Via certification course 6.0. And we, um, what I wanted to do is kind of bring this group together to share some thoughts about what we've covered so far in the first two weeks of the certification course, what these wonderful people, these are the mentors uh, that everybody gets access to when they join the certification, they get mentors, people who have already graduated the program who are here to volunteer their time and support uh, the new students. So what I'll just kind of get us started. We're going to be discussing these concepts for a bit and then just kind of want to see where this goes. Uh, we're going to be discussing two concepts. Number one is setting intentions. Why is it so important to be absolutely crystal clear about what it is you want? Where do you want to go? What results do you want to see in your life and business after uh, completing this course? And then, of course, the second concept we talked about thinking and feeling and doing and creating and staying in your business. Uh, at the end of the class, we ended on talking about three businesses, which is your business, other people's business, and God's business, and how do we make sure that we're staying in ours so we get access to our best self. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to stop ranting here, and I'm going to just open this conversation up to anybody who wants to share what is your takeaway from the concept of the three businesses, and how has it benefited you, and we'll, we'll uh, kind of start the conversation off with that. So anybody that wants to unmute or raise their little digital hand and go, uh, let's do it that way. Let's see, El El Alona and then Linda. Let's do it in that order. Linda, you're next. So, so Eddie, tonight as we talked about the three businesses, I was telling my group that what I realized, and it's really funny, is that when I get triggered or something really beats me up or has me so angry and frustrated, I just stop and chuckle and think, Whose business are you in? And it has been so freeing. And your mood changes immediately because you know you're in somebody else's business. You can come back to your business and be at peace. So I love the concept. Okay. Yes. It is. It's great. And it's isn't that great to be able to chuckle? Yes. <laughs> Instead of letting yes. it get worse. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, Linda, go ahead. I don't think that I had heard before, you know, you kind of hear what you're ready to hear. There's no situation where being your worst self 
get you what you want. And you're always being your worst self when you're in someone else's business or God's business. There's no situation where being your worst worst self gets you what you want. That that was profound for me. How many times have we tried to solve a situation with our worst self? Yeah. And usually, you know, it usually comes because we feel like something bad is about to happen. I have no time to be my best self, so I'm just going to be my worst self. How many of y'all like kind of realize that it feels like being your worst self is a time saver? <laughs> a time saver and so much more effective. Yeah, yeah. I got this. Watch me go. I'm going to be so effective and efficient. Watch this. Roar! And look at all the time I saved. And then you realize, oh, no, I actually just created 10 times more work. And the pain that we cause by being our worst selves to, you know, m- memories for our kids. Yeah, You know, I think a lot of times about when I've been my worst self and that's not the memories that I want my kids to have of me someday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for those of you that have children, you, it's possible you might've experienced this concept of when you see your parents interacting with your children in a way where you want to go, Hey mom or dad, is this really how you want your grandchildren to remember you? You know, is it really your business? You know, uh-huh. um, but it, but it's really because we think there's no other way. So I got to cause pain here. That's going to be the most efficient way to do this. But it's easy. It's easy to do that. It's easy to slip into that because we think it's going to be better. So ultimately, though, this concept is we get to ask ourselves, okay, is it really like the, what keeps us going in there is immediately we've created a story of what we think is going to happen that they are creating, that we're going to have to suffer for. And that's it. You're doing this, and that means this is going to happen, and I'm going to have to fix it. And I think, Eddie, you nail it when you say the story, because it's the story that ultimately holds us back, right? And it's the story that keeps us from getting what we want. And so... The story is what we tell ourselves when we're in other people's business. Yeah, because we're all effective uh, future tellers, fortune tellers. We're all effective at telling exactly what the future is going to be. Yep, you're going to do this, and then you're going to say this, and then this is going to happen, and I'm going to have to fix it. And right there in that moment, we have, there is, there is none of your top 10 strengths are there at all. I love the fact that when you said, when you feel negative emotions, you're in someone else's business or God's business. And now before getting into this, I would have been like, nah, you're wrong. No way. I am not in somebody else's business. I am not in God's business. This is just the way it is. And then I shut it all over the place. (laughs) So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about the fact that you're like you're welcoming your worst self when you're in others or god's business and when you're frustrated angry etc ask the question is it true um rhonda rhonda watches this great show called yellowstone there's a character on there called beth dutton and rhonda calls this person that we're describing she's given that person a name and she says it's her beth dutton you know i think it'd be interesting if y'all uh, gave that person a name. I don't know. The only name that I would give mine is a hole. <laughs> Cause that's the name other people. <laughs> that's the name Angela comes up with whenever I'm being that person. So I think I, sh- I, I think she's named that person a hole. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm being him. Aren't I? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so let's give some real examples. Um, 
uh oh um my son my son has a a, a watch that like tracks him and i could call him on the watch and i got a phone call from the watch while i was coaching basketball practice and all i heard was kids screaming and i had no idea if that was one of my children right so naturally as the dad i didn't go down the path of oh my kids playing with his friends and they're screaming because sometimes kids scream when they play and he butt dialed me with his phone right nope i went down the path of something horrible is happening to my son there you know and he's screaming and i don't know where he is right boom that was the future that was the fortune teller so what happens my thinking leads to feeling and i immediately become my worst self and i start calling back who is this who is that and i start and i run into the other room and i was like angela come here quick get out of practice i need you you know like all of that ugly person starts to come out instead of going hey you don't really know what's going on your worst self is not going to solve this right you're only your best self so i'm like okay calm down what what do we actually know we just hear kids screaming so i just called the number back and then a woman answered and my first first i was like eddie don't go that weird place it's just a woman you don't know who this woman is let's see who it is and then i said hello who's this instead of going, who's this what do you have my son's phone Arr! you know like instead of that nonsense because that a-hole is not going to solve a problem it's, it's just going to make more so i'm like hi who's this and they and then it's the uh woman who run who's the she works the front desk at my kid's school my son actually had already been home and he forgot his watch and she was calling me uh, she was answering the phone to tell me that she has my son's watch she said they'll hold on to it or you can pick it up if they you know before they close that was it that's all <laughs> right and thank goodness i was like don't be the ugly person just be number one strategic number two activator number three and i'm like eddie because woo is not you're not accessing woo i have woo with number four yelling at people there's no woo there right woo is not present so i'm like hey you're gonna get a lot better with woo than you are with restorative which is 33. so there's there's like for me i'm like i don't want to be restorative i want to be woo because woo works but only all the time right so how about this let's do a fun one take a look at a top strength that totally represents your best self if you were to pick one strength in your top 10 which is like that one's definitely part of my best self and then which one of your bottom strengths is a good representation of that other one, that other person. We can go around the room or if anybody already knows, go ahead. I'll go first. Okay, Rain, go ahead. Um, so I think harmony is definitely me all day. It's um, what I wanna help others, you know, achieve in their lives and, so that's me. Everything has to feel like it's following a nice rhythm and it's a nice comfy environment. And I work really hard to achieve that. And in my bottom, when I'm trying to woo someone, it is disgusting. <laughs> so I am not me when I'm trying to woo somebody. However, I do know that I can naturally connect with people in different ways and when I want to. Yeah. Uh, so do you got any examples where you feel like you're getting pushed into woo oh yeah um if i'm around anybody and there's like silence i feel like i have to step up and fill the silence and it has to be in like a complimentary or a joking way and then at the end of it i'm like why did that come out of my mouth <laughs> okay all right so the so it's like the silence is not how it should flow is that the story Yes, absolutely. Judgy here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, it's okay. It's harmony judgy. You know, this is this is silent. It shouldn't flow this way. I got it. Let me try to woo this group. Is that it? Mm hmm And it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So would everybody else describe it the same way? And it doesn't matter what strength, and just say, Yeah, when I'm that one, it's gross. Yes? Isn't that interesting? And it, for you, it might be harmony. For me, it's harmony is gross. <laughs> but it's, I had 
everything you're saying i'm like oh it's so gross because i feel that way when i think of harmony i'm like Ugh. okay <laughs> and you probably feel that same way with woo yes uh all right anybody else top strength is you bottom strength is gross for me, I have maximizer as my top strength and restorative in the bottom. And they get confused sometimes because my maximizer loves to take things that are good and make them better. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means I think I have to fix things. And so separating the two of those is difficult many times. And I have to think and be cognizant and really like stay in my business, so to speak. So maximizer taking things that are good and making better and asking, do you want to get better? That's my business. Trying to fix other people's problems, not my business. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, this is why maximizer and restorative oftentimes are at opposite ends because maximizer is like, is, has nothing to do with problems. In fact, if you're maximizing, then you're not looking at anything that needs to be fixed. Everything's already, or the thing is already great. So if you're focusing, focusing on something with the, the idea that it needs to be fixed, that's the opposite of maximizer for you. Yes, is that right? Exactly. Um, any examples? Oh, geez, Louise. Um, let's look at when I teach a program for the Eddie Beer Coaching Certification course. Yeah. And it's already great. However, I decide... I want to fix it and make it. I can't even do it. I can't really actually say it because I don't do it anymore. I'm mm -hmm. so good at not fixing things. But if I try to find a crack and a little thing and try to, it, I can't even say it. That's how ugly it is for me. So, yeah, no, I don't have an example. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it, I want to fix it. I found something in here that I want to fix, or I found something in here I can make better. That's better. Yeah. Right. And like almost like by saying I'm going to. OK, so I think what I'm hearing you say is if I'm going to fix it, then I need to throw it away or and start over or change it. But maximizer, it sounds like for you, it's focusing on what's good about it and improving it without uh -huh. throwing it away or changing it. Exactly. Like I would never want to make this coaching program start all over again because it's that good. Mm. And I think of ways to make it better. I can't help but think of ways to make it better. Does that mean it's not good? No, it's already great. So what's yeah. better? Than great? <laughs> yeah. So for the maximizers out there, when when things are showing up as broken, right? It's this is what you're you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, anybody else? Let's see. Who else got, got a good example? What strength represents your best self? What's the bottom one that just makes it go, Ugh. Lori, is that you? I just saw your hand. Yep. Activator oh. is in my top strengths and deliberative is in my bottom. Another common opposite end strengths. So give me an example. So activator, I really want to just do the right thing and get it done fast and just move on it. Turn that thought into action like no joke. But if I have to stop and I have to think about it and I have to take serious care and looking at everything and to make that decision and look at all the factor, I mean, I hate looking at obstacles. It's like, can we just move on? Let's just dodge around them. We're going to be fine. Okay. So th that's, that's for me has happened quite a bit, especially in my professional life. So I know that I'm like going down a really bad path because I, I I just lose all my energy when I do it. Mm -hmm. And and then I just feel like I got nothing done. So, you know, when I think about the opposite of when I think about, sorry, when I think about activator being in this case, the opposite of deliberative, like I, when I think of deliberative, I just think I just want to cry. It it just, it feels like punishment. Deliberative yeah. is low for me too absolutely so it feels like punishment to even like it's like you you want me to go over every detail that i've messed up in this thing do, do you understand that every detail in here that's messed up is like literally stabbing me in the heart and it's killing the joy and passion i have in this thing that i'm doing and now i don't even want to do it anymore yeah is that is that what it feels like yeah and before I learned about this, honest and truly, 
there was a woman who just drove me crazy because she kept asking the same question over and over and over again, getting every little detail that she needed. And it was driving me nuts until I finally figured out, I'm like, wait a second, why is this triggering me so much? I'm like, oh, it's because she definitely needs all the details before she can make a decision. And then once I learned that about her, I was just like, learner's also a high strength for me. I was like, this makes more sense. And it was easier to deal with. So, so even on what you, the example you just said, I'm, I'm hearing you say, I can stay out of their, I can stay out of their business. When exactly. From strength's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That's cool. All right. That's helpful. Was that helpful for anybody else? Right. Um, okay. Let's go to, uh, uh, I think it was Alona and then Patrice. Alona, did you have something you wanted to throw in? So for me, um, my top one I was I can think of is woo. I love talking to people. I love meeting people. My bottom strength, number 34, is deliberative. So sometimes yeah. I can meet people or I could just see people and I start making up those stories we just talked about, right? I'd be like, look at her. She don't look friendly. Well, I might not should approach her. And I'm all in my head about her. And then I go, I'll be like, you know what? She just might be having a day. I need a smile from me. Smile, approach, talk. And all those stories go away. All that overthinking goes away. And it's just, it's just the stories I make up in my head sometimes and overthink things when I love to meet people and talk to people. So, you know. Some days I have those days when I'm in the bottom of that deliberative and I'd be like, mm, nah, you know, I'm judging her. I'm judging. Yes. So I'm judging her. And, you know, I'm like, mm, just be who you are. Go back to woo and talk to the lady. You might brighten her day. Um, you, you know what I'm thinking about? Has anyone, I gotta do a reference. Has anyone seen the movie Magic Mike 2? Mm. Has anybody here seen the movie Magic Mike 2? Okay, y'all. I Okay. Look, I'm not recommending this movie for a <laughs> reason. I'm telling you. There's a scene in the movie where these guys, these are male strippers. They are on a road trip to go to do this performance. And Magic Mike 2 is one of my favorite movies. It's so good. And this, one of the guys, is his name, uh, the actor is Joe Manganiello. And he's like six foot four, six foot five, and chiseled. Like he is a specimen of a man physically, okay? And they go into this uh, like a like a gross like a gas station kind of quickie stop kind of place, and there's a girl behind the counter who's on her phone like this, just looking miserable. And he literally goes, and like one of his buddies I think is challenged. I want you to go in there and make that girl's day. <laughs> and the scene that follows is unbelievably hilarious where he literally does an exotic dance for this girl using potato chips and bottled water inside of it is unbelievably hilarious and he <laughs> turns her from this frowny miserable woman to like smiling and laughing and all of the guys are outside the window going <laughs> it's such a great example of what you just described because up until that moment, he was like what I would describe the way you're describing. He was in total deliberative, talking about how their trip is not going to work, how they're not going to get what they want. And and you just, I think you just displayed it. So if you, if you want a YouTube Magic Mike 2 uh, convenience store scene, just watch that and you'll be okay. dying of laughter. It's so funny. <laughs> but, but for you, Ilona, and, and anybody that has deliberative low or woo high and woo high, it it's when you're in your head, you are the opposite of, of winning others over is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, do we have anybody here with deliberative high? I don't want to track <laughs> any of them, but somebody's got to. I do. You do. Where's Wu for you, Meryl? Uh, 31. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's deliberative is six. Okay. All right. We're going to, I want to go back to Patrice because Patrice was next, but Meryl, yeah. I'm going to give you time to prepare. Okay. That's it. See what I mean? Y'all, this is why we know strength. 
because we know the person with deliberative means a little bit of time to prepare. Uh, so prepare, Meryl. I'm going to have you give an example of why deliberative is joy and why woo is gross, right? For you. Uh, uh, okay, Patrice, go ahead. And I love the way this conversation has at least uncovered for me that the other tell that I'm in my lower strengths is that it automatically injects the getting into somebody else's business. Because like for me, I always don't have a frame of reference. So I have to just start making up stuff so like um, individualization is my 10 and includer is my 34. And I noticed like when I try to create a program, I love getting like really hyper specific so I can go deep. But then that fear comes in. I jump down to includer and go, what about this? Well, what if I'm leaving out this person? What about, and then I start immediately getting into their business and assuming what they're going to think and they're going to have hurt feelings and they're not going to, and just it spirals. And when I'm in those lower strengths, it's like the hamster wheel that you don't ever get off of. And you just keep creating more stories and being in more out of my business because it never comes to any type of conclusion. So that was a really good highlight for me and a really good tell of when I'm slipping or even slipping into, you know, the lower side of my strengths is I'm on that hamster wheel. And part of being on that hamster wheel is I'm in other people's business and not my own. And once you're on the hamster wheel, it, it's hard to get off. Yeah, it is hard to get off, right? So we have to, we almost have to consciously go, oh, I'm on the hamster wheel. And by that point mm -hmm. in time, you've been on it for a while. <laughs> I, <laughs> Everyone around you knows it, and you're the last one to realize it. <laughs> That's yeah. when you just started feeling like this. I don't know if you've ever, we all have that feeling of like, almost like shame of like realizing, oh, I'm the jerk. Or I'm the <laughs> one who's been off. And then you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> and then in that moment, you're like, please, please, please get back to my top strength. Please, please, please get back to my top strength. Please, please, please be the good person, right? Uh, and I know and that feeling. I got to jump in just right there to add to what you just said. Go ahead. Because I've been under a lot of stress lately. And we go to the same coffee shop almost every day. And today I walked in and she said, hey, Jay, which one are we getting today? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> She goes, are we getting happy, Jay, or are we getting miserable, Jay? And I'm like, oh, Lord have mercy. It showed. And I didn't realize. I thought it didn't show. So it's good to be reminded. Yeah, we all need that reminder. None of us, we, we're, we're not as good as hiding as we think we are, y'all. We are just not. Uh, Patrice, I don't think I got you. What was your high strength and what was that low strength? Um, individualization was high and includer is my 34. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Talk about that. That's interesting. Why? So why is individualization high for you? Why is Includer low? And what's a, an example of where you um, get pulled away from that one? Um, well, and I think it, it falls, at least it falls in for me nicely because I also have other, um, a lot of other strategic thinking strengths. So um, in the, making it individualized, whatever it is that I'm doing, conversation, program, allows me to go deep and be, use my strategic strength and make something that's really customized. And I love that because I know that I'm going to get, or hopefully get a positive result and it's just more innate. But then when I start trying to include everybody, then it, it just becomes too vast. Like there's just too much. It's, um, and now I have to accommodate a million things and then I never get done mm -hmm. and it becomes like, you know, stressful. I start trying to overthink of these unknowns and stepping out of my business because now I'm starting to kind of try to project and like, um, like you've said, get that crystal ball out and, um, try to swing back in and it just, it just never works. And I never get to a conclusion. I just stay on that hamster wheel uh so and it's also tempting when you like a, like because i'm learning i like to do a lot of things it's tempting to want to include everything and um so it um that's that's my tell and then i get back into all right what's the niche what's the problem i'm trying to solve let's make it 
um, make it specific and, and applicable and just do a bunch of those little things to include everybody. Okay. So relator is high for you. Is that true? It is. It's my 11. Okay. But don't, you know, where is consistency? It's very low. I want to say probably like around 29. Yeah. Deliberative is also low for me. Yeah. Okay. So for, for the viewers out there, relator is oftentimes, oftentimes, not always the opposite of includer and oftentimes individualization is the opposite of consistency. Oftentimes, not always. Sometimes people have them both high and both low, but uh, this is, this is the, this is the aroma of strengths I'm getting from your, from your words. <laughs> um okay yep. all right um let's uh see meryl are you ready <laughs> as ready as i'll be <laughs> i want to hear why is why is um so you're the opposite of what elona was talking about right woo is low deliberative is high right Talk about why those are for you and give some examples okay oh well i i wasn't planning on talking about deliberative as what as my high um but um in, I was going to start with intellection. So let's start with that one then. No, I, but I, I can include both. With intellection, I just I'm going to be thinking, and and um, and not and not and, and and in my head. So when when I'm faced in a let's say a room full of people, and uh, because I am. Thinking so much and ideation is like my top joy strength. I think uh, when I, if I'm in a room full of people, um, th what happens to me is I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm thinking about all these things, but there's no way they're going to be interested in what's going on in my head, and so that kind of drains me if if I have to uh, speak about a, a subject that I I'm in. I'm not in my business. I'm in their business. I'm thinking, oh, they're not going to be interested in it. So I hold back. Yeah. And that's that's kind of how it works for me. Um, yeah, pretty much. Is is the story that, um, like, is the story we're talk talking about here for you is they'll never understand me? Uh, mm. Or they'll never see what I see. Is that in there? I don't know that. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about that. Um maybe they might not understand what makes me tick. What what you know, what interests me. Okay, there yeah. you go. So there in those terms, not understand me, right? They won't get it. Right? Yeah. So why bother? Is that is that it? Yeah. Yeah. But yes. It it would be it would feel awkward to me if I start a conversation about tuning forks, let's say. Yeah. It's like <laughs> <laughs> um and, and for those of you listening, we're talking about actual tuning forks, right? So yes. the um why for you, why is woo gross? Very, makes me very uncomfortable. I do not like being the center of attention and having people focused on me per se. Okay, so let's have, uh, let's, let's have a little fun now. Everybody on <laughs> the group, okay? Let's imagine Ilona and uh, Meryl are partnered up to do a project. Okay, let's play a little game. Ilona and Meryl are partnered up to do a project, and the project is uh, Bingo Night. For, for a bunch of elderly people, whatever that means, all right? So, bingo night for elderly people. Meryl and Alona are in charge. That's all I'm going to give you all. Let's go from there. But just knowing that, that, that deliberative and woo are at opposite ends for both of these individuals, what is that going to look like with these two running that whole thing? And by the way, they have no help. It's just those two. And then they got all these people coming in to play bingo. Alona's going to be calling the numbers okay. and making it so much fun. And Meryl's going to be like going from table to table, 
just talking to the people and getting their knowledge of years past, absorbing that, kind of sharing with them things that she knows and like just that kind of behind the scenes. You know what's cool about this? This little this this little thing that we're doing. It doesn't even matter if you know Ilona and Meryl. If I just said, here's <laughs> here's what these two people are doing and here's their strengths reports, you would give me those same answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, who else wants to chime in on this one? Except for Ilona and Meryl. Y'all, you two get to listen to our feedback about you two. <laughs> So I see in the setup. So <laughs> Meryl is just like, well, we got to have, we got to have the numbers right here. And we got to make sure we have the cards right here. And, oh no, the mic isn't working. What are we going to do? Oh my gosh. Ellen is like, <laughs> don't worry, honey. I got this. I can <laughs> scream. And my loud, my voice is loud enough. They will hear me. Okay. We're good. <laughs> we're good. That's what I see in setup. That's good. All right. Anybody else? I see Meryl getting everybody on their feet and go, while your loner's getting everything ready, we're going to do a small Tai Chi exercise just to get you warmed up. And I want you to close your eyes and focus on the actual word bingo. And think of the number 54 or whatever number you want to manifest. And then once you're ready, raise your hand, let Elona know, and Elona's going to take you through those B, one, all those numbers. That's what I see. So you've known Elona long enough, Jay. What What is the numbers getting called out going to sound like? Oh, my gosh. Uh, let me think. I don't play bingo. So like. Call out uh, B4. What is it? B4. Oh, B, four, before you do anything, listen to me. Okay. Do you have your thing in your hand to do the thing? I don't, bingo, right? You do the thing. Yeah, I don't there's like a big marker. Last time I played, you did this, that, it's probably electronic. Like B, four, B, like whatever the, you give Has me a number. Have you ever played public, like played in public bingo? Like the, like it's, it's really fun. They, I used to live in an area where, uh, there was a bingo night in the neighborhood once a month, and Angela and I would always go. Like, and you you would win prizes. It wasn't for money, but it, we would always go, and it's always a good time. But they always had someone, Ilona, that never just said the number. It was always a show, right? And they taught us, and this person taught us, like there some of the numbers have jokes. Like if you say before everyone in the audience is supposed to say and after <laughs> like and and so this person taught everyone in the audience all the different clever ones sort of like when you go watch rocky horror picture show for those of you who remember that it's an audience participation kind of event and so alona man you, i like if i'm going to do a b if i'm going to do a bingo night i'm having you with that microphone like that is for sure and and we'll have Meryl getting everybody into their mindset of manifesting hitting bingo multiple times with their minds before it happens. So what a cool, like, like one, two punch, the two of you would be uh, <laughs> running a bingo night. Right. Uh, it's so cool. Okay. So what are, what are, now what I are our big, so we'll, bingo. we'll, uh, sorry, what, Jay, were you saying something? I don't want to play bingo. We need to do so. I already know Meryl's there with her ideation. We need to do strange bingo, right, Meryl? Are you already thinking it? She okay. is. <laughs> okay, so we might we might be scheduling strengths bingo for this group. I think so. Okay, so let's uh, let's wrap up. What are what are some some joyful? We'll call it joyful takeaways for you all when it comes to strengths. And let's let's see. Uh, we there's a, there's one person we haven't heard from yet. That's Wayne. Uh, Wayne, why don't you share some uplifting takeaways about just strengths in general? What do you love about strengths? You can even talk, tell everybody what you're doing if you like. Um, let's hear from you. Well, I'm currently um, in Tampa getting ready to board a cruise tomorrow to work on a reinvention, reinvent yourself retreat. 
and I'm giving a talk on on strength. So it's um, really exciting. I've never done this before, and I'm looking forward to it. And um, tonight there was a whole mix up with um, the food and stuff at the meet and greet. The the person who's running the retreat is getting over COVID, and she's hoping she's going to be able to get on the cruise tomorrow. But it was just a little bit of a mix up. But I relied on my number three strength, which was adaptability, and came up with another plan for um, my friend Dennis and I, who were left out of the food ordering piece and um, and worked it out so that I get out of the meet and greet, we can go get dinner and I can still get on this call. So adaptability is always one that uh, is good to um, to use. And, and, you know, one of my bottom strengths, actually my bottom strength is analytical. I don't care what happened. I don't care how it happened. I don't need to know all the background to why the food got messed up or why the whatever got messed up. Let's just be adaptable and just um, figure out how to get around it and and go from there. You know, so. it's it's funny, but if we had someone in the room next to you who had analytical high and and um, adaptability low, for them it would they would have that same energy and joy just using different words he would just say i don't care about the moment let's find out why this happened and they would say it with the same joy that you just said does anybody else find that just in like what like that's uh, fascinating to me the biggest takeaway from that is there is no right way to do anything there's just your way and everyone else's way, and it all works. Yes. But only a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> but only one hundred percent of the time. Yes. All right. Cool. We haven't been around Eddie that much, have we? <laughs> I, I would. Um, love I would love to leave it with a. I would love to ask the question that I ha love to ask with the uh, with the three businesses. Going back to that, which was, if you are in somebody else's business, then who's in your strengths? Not me. <laughs> you know, yeah. When you're on that stage, you know you've got like you know for you. Wayne, analytical low means I don't, I don't, I'm not going on that stage to prove anything to anybody. I'm going on that stage to connect with that moment, how special of a moment it's going to be with those people in that moment. What are the needs of the people in that moment? Strategic is low for you too. Is that true? And, um, or is that high? Wayne? Strategic is number one. Number <laughs> one. Okay. So analytical. Oh. <laughs> being low. Yeah. Strategic input adaptable. Sweet. Okay. So it's strategic to be in the moment, to not have an overall plan of over everything that's going to happen. It's more like I'm going to go there. I'm going to strategically connect with the needs of that group. And I'm going to let my slides be my guide, but not the, the controller of what I do. Right. Yeah. So Wayne, we are all cheering you on. We're all backing you up. We all know it's going to be great. And we're just super proud of you. I'm proud of you. Uh, and I can't wait to hear how it goes because I know it's going to go beautifully. So it went, so far, it's gone good. You know, I met somebody in the airport today, sat next to her at lunch, and turns out she had had her strengths report done a couple of years ago at her job. And she was very frustrated, in fact, because they didn't do anything with it. And um, I didn't have any business cards with me because they were all packed in my suitcase, but she gave me hers. So I'm going to have a strengths conversation with her when I get back. So and All right. share with her some insights on her strengths. How did you meet her and how did you start talking about strengths? She, there was like one seat left in the cafeteria where I was eating my yogurt and parfait and she was having a chicken sandwich. And I said, can I sit here? And she said, yes. And uh, she said, what are you traveling for? I said, I'm going to a cruise. And she said, I you know she was traveling on business. And she said, uh, I said, I'm speaking on the cruise. She goes, oh, what are you speaking about? And I said, you know, uh, infinite uniqueness of everybody and based on Clifton strengths. Oh, I had a strengths assessment done. I'm familiar with Clifton. And then we got to talking about the fact that she, the whole conversation was maybe 10 minutes long. And then I had to go board my flight. But uh, it was it was fun. So I have her business card right here and I'm going to 
give her a call when I get home. So oh, cool. Awesome. All right. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to wrap this up and we'll be uh, doing more of these in the future. Uh, thank each and every one of you all for being here. Jay and Lona and Linda and Meryl and, and uh, Rayanne and Lori and Patrice. Um, and, you know, um, Heather looks like Heather's on the beach somewhere. She's probably swimming in that ocean out there. I'm not sure where that lake is. Um, Springs hanging out in the background and Wayne, congratulations, man. I'm, I'm excited for you. Jay, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, and uh, everybody, so for those of you that are watching this, go get your tickets to Unleash Your Strengths Live. Uh, we'll put the link in the comments. Make sure you uh, get your tickets to be there in Salt Lake City on September 17th. And you get to hang out with these beautiful people that are going to be there uh, and so many more. Uh, if you can't make it live, always there's going to be a live stream ticket you'll be able to get. We'll put the link to that in the comments. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you all so much for being my best friends, my strengths friends. You're all the best. Um, so have a good night and we'll see you all on the next video. Bye everybody. Bon voyage, Wayne. Thanks. Good luck, Wayne. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got a lot out of that. What we're trying to do is trying to help people stay in their best selves, be their best selves with everything they do. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and like subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, we have more of these uh, wonderful discussions and videos coming up very soon. So have an awesome day. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, everybody.